Hey everyone. Hey guys, welcome to Obscure MCU. In this episode, I'll be ranking every single Iron Man suit that appeared in the Infinity Saga, and then place them all on a tier list. A few things to note before we get started, this will be based on my personal preferences, so I'll be factoring in not just the abilities, but also the style and just general aesthetic of the suits. If I were to rank it based on powers and capabilities, it'd be a pretty boring list and pretty predictable. Like we all know the nanotech and the Hulkbuster suits would be at the top and like the earlier suits would be at the bottom. There's not much fun ranking them that way. But if you guys do want to see me rank them in that type of order, let me know in the comments. This is again entirely just based on my own preferences. And just a few more things. I want to give a huge shout out to the people who write and have contributed to the MCU wiki. Although I spend hours watching these movies a ton growing up and I've tried my best to get as much info as possible from art books and other sources. I wouldn't know half of this stuff if not for the information posted on the wiki, so big shout out to all the people who work there. And also I want to give a shout out to a lot of you guys watching this right now. It was my Iron Man videos that really pushed my channel out there, and I know many of you watching this now will subscribe because of my Iron Man videos, so just want to say I appreciate you all sticking around for this long. I hope you enjoyed this list, and I'll leave a link in the description for you to make your own version of this tier list. I'm really curious to know what your top choices are and how you would rank all these suits. So when you're done watching this video, Click the link and make your own list and be sure to share that with me in the comments. Okay, starting with the Mark 1. Objectively speaking, this is probably the worst suit, but because it was the very first suit created in a cave with a box of scraps, it's earned its boost on the tier list. But honestly, the best spot I'm willing to give it is the top of C tier. Next up would be the Mark 2, a complete overhaul of the first suit. It has a really cool detail. If you look at the torso and like some of the limbs, there's some rivets in it, giving it like a more industrial feel. But its lack of weaponry and pretty bland appearance places it right at B tier. Next up is the Mark III, arguably one of his most iconic suits in the MCU. And for a good reason. Yeah, this suit can go anywhere else but A tier. Okay, next up is the Mark IV, and this may be an unpopular opinion, but I genuinely believe that this is the perfect Iron Man suit. So just stay with me for a second, right? Close your eyes for a sec, and just say the word Iron Man. Now what's the first image that comes to mind? For me, that looks a lot like the Mark IV. It's literally the ideal image of what the stereotypical Iron Man armor is, but translated perfectly in live action. It takes the best parts of the Mark III, but it's streamlined and more refined in its shape. It has the perfect balance of red and gold, and also has that old, like, clunky feel that the Phase 1 suits had. I could honestly just go on, but my only issue is that it didn't have more screen time, if I'm being honest. So anyways, the Mark IV is the top spot of the S tier. Next up is the Mark V. It's honestly just as iconic as the Mark III for the suit-up scene alone, but aside from the cool suit-up sequence, it's actually one of the weakest suits among Tony's arsenal, since its primary use is just for emergencies only, rather than actual combat. It takes a lot of damage just from a few hits from Whiplash, so I'm putting it in the A tier, right behind the Mark III. Again, just because of that suit-up scene alone really carries <laughs> a lot of the weight that the Mark V has, so yeah, that's where it's going. Next up is the Mark VI. It's pretty much just a recolor of the Mark IV, but with a triangular arc reactor, have you guys seen that meme where it's like a toothpick changes everything? <laughs> That's pretty much how I view the Mark IV versus the Mark VI. Essentially the same thing, but just with minor tweaks. Okay, now onto the Mark VII. Funny enough, for a while I never really liked this suit, but over time and while making these videos and also just reading a bunch of your comments, it's really started to grow on me. I like it a lot, so I'm putting it in the S tier right above the Mark VI, but right below the Mark IV. Okay, now we're moving into the Iron Legion, starting with the Mark VIII. But before I place this and the Mark IX, I wanted to quickly address that it's been up for debate for a while on whether it was the Mark VIII or Mark IX that had that little moment in Iron Man 3 that attacks Pepper. And that would have been a huge help in deciding between these two. And though there's evidence pointing to it being both, for the sake of the ranking, I'm going to act as if that was the Mark IX. I'm working on a video covering my reasons why I think that is, so stay tuned for that, that'll be coming soon. But anyways, back on topic. The Mark VIII is described to be a complete systems upgrade of the Mark VII, so 
so not much about it really stands out. It has a darker, more chromatic shade of gold and more refined plating, but we really haven't seen it enough to make a real impact. It still looks cool, so I'm placing it in S tier, but behind the Mark 7. And the next up would be the Mark 9. And this is the suit that I think appeared at the end of Iron Man 3. Again, I'll make a video going over why I think that is later. But something I wanted to note right before we go too deep into the Iron Legion, something that you'll come to notice as we go through these suits is that many of them reuse assets from different suits. So a lot of them are just combinations of different parts. So if you look closely at the Mark 9, right? For example, it has the same helmet as the Mark 30 and 33 and a few other suits that you'll see. But the arms and torso are ripped straight from the Mark 7 and then the legs are used in the Mark 17. So while it's just a mesh of other suits, the fact that it still looks this good says a lot about it. I put it above the Mark 8 on S tier. Now for the Mark 10. If you take everything I said about the Mark 9, about taking different aspects of different suits, the Mark 10 does that. But this is the worst outcome of meshing suits together. In canon, it's supposed to be a prototype for like a higher altitude flight suit, which explains like those bulkier things that are built onto the legs, kind of to help stabilize it in higher atmosphere, I guess. But it's just not really a good look. I'm putting it in D tier. Next up, we got the Mark 11, which was Tony's first attempt at a stealth suit. Though it only had like three seconds of screen time, there's not much to go off of other than just images that you can find online. It's honestly near identical to the Mark 8, but incorporates the new helmet, which you probably recognize from the Mark 17. There really isn't much else to say about this one. It's literally just mid. <laughs> so I'm putting it in B tier. Next up is the Mark 12. The suit is the first of its kind in terms of Tony using other materials besides the typical gold titanium alloy for the armor plating, making this the most durable suit at the time. And the mix of the dark gold and gray is also a pretty nice combination because we've never really seen that at this point in his suits. This one's going in B tier. For these next two suits, the Mark 13 and 14, they were designed to reduce weight for the sake of increasing speed. So Tony kind of trimmed down the overall shape of them. But for some reason, he colored them both in dark gray and silver. And they both kind of <laughs> look just as ugly. So I'm putting them in a D tier. Next up is the Mark 15, codenamed Sneaky. This is the first suit in the Iron Legion to have a code name as well. Most of you guys probably recognize this one as the suit that Tony jumped into as the oil rig was kind of collapsing towards the end of Iron Man 3. This is the first suit that is like really 100% unique and doesn't use any reused parts from past suits. So kind of like what I was saying about the Mark 9 and 10, how you can tell a lot of these suits are just mashups of other suits, like other components of suits. This one seems to be 100% unique in its case, so placing it in the top of B tier. Now onto the Mark 16, codenamed Nightclub. Tony's most advanced stealth suit at this point in his armor's development. And like the Mark 15, this one is also 100% unique in its shape and overall build. It has a really cool, more intimidating style helmet. It got a lot more screen time than some of the other suits. And if you remember what I said about the Mark 13 and 14, about how Tony began to reduce the amount of plating for the suits to increase maneuverability and speed, I think it really reached its peak here. Since Tony was able to do like hand-to-hand -hand combat while wearing the armor, at a pace that we haven't seen before with any of the other suits, so I'd say the Mark 16's earned its spot easily in the S tier for me. Next up is the Mark 17, codename Heartbreaker, arguably the face of the Iron Legion. This one's built like a tank and its oversized chest RT is really cool. So this one goes in the A tier. The Mark 18 is called Casanova. It's a blend of the Mark 16 and 17, where it retains the bulkier tank build from Heartbreaker, but adds all the stealth technology that the Mark 16 had. It's a cool concept, but I think it just wasted on an ugly design. So I'm putting it in C tier. The Mark 19, also known as Tiger, was made for high speed. And I just love how different it looks in terms of color scheme and design. It's a lot like the Mark 10, but it just handled better. So this one goes in the top of C tier. The Mark 20, also known as Python, is a long distance flight suit with upgraded energy reserves. It's basically just a black and gold recolor of the Mark 9, so easy S tier. The Mark 21, also known as Midas, was also built for high speeds, and it's basically just an all gold Mark 7. So again, this one is also an easy S tier for me. Next up is the Mark 22, codenamed Hot Rod. It's just a less cooler war machine armor, and with the corny flame decals on the legs. So bottom of D tier. And this one got taken out by a pull, so <laughs> bottom of D tier. 
Next up is the Mark 23, also known as Shades. This is probably one of the most underrated suits within the Iron Legion in my opinion. It's built to withstand extreme heats and is honestly pretty unique, especially with the desert camo paint job, so, so I'd place this one in A tier. The Mark 24, codenamed Tank, I really don't need to say anything else. Its name is what it's built for. It's just the worst repaint of the Heartbreaker armor, so I'm putting this one in B tier. The Mark 25 and 26 are going in C tier together. They're literally just the same suit, but with different colors. I know one is built for construction while the other is built for withstanding gamma radiation, but they're equally just as impractical and funny looking. Unless it's Jarvis controlling the suit, imagine how weird it would feel to have two jackhammer arms. So yeah, the Mark 25 and 26 are going in C tier. Okay, next is the Mark 27, codenamed Disco. It's probably Tony's most advanced stealth suit that he has. It can change into any colors in its surroundings, and is often referred to as the Chameleon suit, and for a good reason. And the fact that it has the same base build as the Mark 7, a lot like the Mark 21, easily boosted up a few spots for me, so I'm putting this one in the A tier. Next up, we have the Mark 28, also known as Jack. This one's another basic armor, but it can protect its user from high levels of various types of radiation, which is a really cool feature, but I'm just not a fan of the color scheme, so this one's going in C tier. The Mark 29, Fiddler. This one takes the Mark 25 and 26, but makes it worse somehow by reducing the jackhammer arm to just to one. I don't know what Tony was thinking while making this suit, so D tier. Okay, next up, we're in the 30s, and these have some of the best and worst suits in the Iron Legion in my opinion, so this one will be pretty fun to rank. Starting off with a banger though, we have the Mark 30, Blue Steel. This is the prototype of the Centurion suit. If I had the brain of Tony Stark and the resources to make my own Iron Man suit, this is exactly how I would do it. I just love the color blue and the blue and silver combo on an Iron Man suit is just very iconic in my opinion. So this is an easy S tier. Next up is the Mark 31. Another in the Centurion subcategory of suits. This one is unique in its high speed capabilities and it was the first one to rush into battle against the AIM soldiers. And something about the dark, mossy, metallic green in the silver combination is another really unique and eye-catching paint job for an Iron Man suit. So this one is also an easy S tier for me. The Mark 32, codenamed Romeo, is one of those suits, like I mentioned earlier in the video, that's a combination of various different suits. So like it has the Mark 16 helmet, the Mark 17 repulsor, it has the Mark 7 everything else, but with a dark silver and chrome color scheme. It's honestly a really cool looking suit and probably the best code name too. So this one goes in A tier. Okay, next up we have the GOAT, Mark 33, the Silver Centurion. I love everything about this suit. No notes, third place in S tier. The following this is probably the ugliest suit in the Iron Legion, the Mark 34 Southpaw. It's crazy how we went from like some of the best suits starting in the 30s and now at rock bottom, D tier. The following this would be Red Snapper, the Mark 35. This one's cool. It was one of the few suits that actually got called out on screen. This one's meant for evacuation and fire and rescue, so it has limited use. But one cool thing about this suit though is that how Tony would later reutilize its primary feature in the Hulkbuster. But yeah, nothing too crazy here, so bottom of B tier. And then following the Mark 35 is the Mark 36, which is known as Peacemaker. This is the first non-lethal Iron Man suit made for crowd control. It's pretty boring to be honest with you, so C tier. Now we're back to some of the best suits in the roster. The Mark 37 Hammerhead, made for deep sea exploration. And I just can't stress enough how much I love the turquoise and rose gold color scheme. It's so unique and with the bulkier build and those like heavy duty industrial lights built into the helmet with the torpedoes. It's honestly just the perfect suit among the Iron Legion in terms of its uniqueness. So like a lot of these suits are built for specific environmental situations, right? But when you look at the suits as a whole, a lot of them kind of just blend together as like typical Iron Man suits. But this one, just by looking at it, there's no mistaking it for like what it is and what its purpose is. So for this, top of A tier, easily. Now I'm gonna sound like a complete hypocrite because what I just said about the Mark 37, applies to the Mark 38, but I'm just not a fan of it. It's made for heavy lifting, no doubt about that at all. And aside from maybe running through walls, I personally don't think there's much use for this armor, so I'm putting it in D tier. 
Now another fan favorite, and easily one of my favorites too, the Mark 39, also known as Star Boost, the suborbital flight suit. No notes, just check out my video if you want a breakdown of all the specific details, but this is another easy S tier. Following the Mark 39 is the Mark 40 shotgun, Tony's perfected high speed suit. It's a really unique build, I love the helmet and that big jet booster in the back. Another S tier. Now we got the Mark 41, also known as Bones. Honestly a pretty weak suit overall, but the unique build and the color scheme carries it to A tier for me. Now that's it for the Iron Legion, back into the mainland suits I guess you could say. Next would be the Mark 42, the Prodigal Son, the Bouncing Badass Baby Brother. It has like 20 different code names, but... Now it's kind of hard to describe, but the way I always viewed this suit was the classy Iron Man suit, if that makes sense. It streamlined a lot of the typical designs you'd see on an Iron Man armor. It's a lot thinner, sleeker, classier in its overall appearance, giving it more of a fancy look to it. And it perfectly represents what this next generation of Iron Man suits are basically all about. It's an easy S tier, but there's just one thing holding it back from a higher spot within this tier, which is actually addressed in the next suit, which is the Mark 43. And that one thing that I was saying was holding back the Mark 42 was simply the color scheme. Honestly, the Mark 42's base design was just too good for them to only use it once. And I think Marvel kind of realized that, which is why they literally took the same armor but just inverted the primary colors from gold to red to mainly red to gold. Which is why I have the Mark 43 pretty high up on the S tier. I just wish we got to see more of this suit in action because the moments we did see with this suit are arguably the best that Iron Man's ever looked in the MCU. Okay, moving on to the Mark 44, better known as the Hulkbuster. I'm putting this at the top of the B tier. It's just an awesome suit overall, similar to what I was saying about the Mark 37, where just one look at the suit and you know exactly what it's for, and it does its job well. Then following the Mark 44, we have the Ferrari of the Iron Man suits, the Mark 45. And for a while, this one was always overlooked by a lot of people, but thanks to it being added to Fortnite recently, most people now know what the Mark 45 is, which makes me really happy personally. And for a time, it was my number one, but after some thought, it just doesn't beat the Mark 4 in my opinion. So number two in the S tier, easily. And also, check out my video breakdown of the Mark 45. I think that's probably one of my best videos on the channel. Following up with the Mark 45 is the Mark 46, another luxury car of the Iron Man suits. I love the addition of the micro arc reactors placed all around the suit for extra power. And the little additional things that Tony added, like the restraining clamps and the nets and the practical tools was also a really nice addition. The S tier for Mark 46. Now the Mark 47 is again, just a repaint of the Mark 46, but I don't know, something about the predominant silver, it just doesn't really look too good to me. So I place this one in the A tier. Now in regards to the Mark 48 or the Hulkbuster, 2.0. I don't know if you've heard of this common criticism given to the MCU, but there's this phrase that's been going around called MCU overdesign, which is basically if you take a regular superhero costume, which is pretty basic in its overall flow, but seemingly overcomplicating it and adding a bunch of extra lines and panels and details. I personally don't agree with that all the time, but if there ever was an example of overdesign, it would be the Mark 48. It's just too much going on for a Hulkbuster suit. So it's going in C tier. The Mark 49 or Rescue is an easy A tier for me. I love the color scheme, the more bluish purple design. The whole backpack unit is really cool. And that little moment in Endgame with Pepper and Tony was just iconic. So yeah, easy A tier. Now for the Mark 50, it's honestly hard for me to place this one anywhere but A tier. It's definitely Tony's most powerful suit at the time. But the reason it's not an S tier is because it lacks a proper armored look. I personally prefer when Iron Man looks like Iron Man, if you know what I mean, like a bulkier armor, not like a slim, skin-tight bodysuit, which is what the Mark 50 kind of resembles. Its abilities and capabilities are without a doubt some of the best that we've seen, and the fact that it was this suit that managed to make Thanos bleed, that's, that's pretty iconic, let's be honest, but I don't know, it's just a bit too, what's the word, like maybe like spandexy, 
<laughs> That's the only way I can really describe it. It's just a bit too slim fitting for me. More alien rather than an actual mechanical suit. And finally is the Mark 85, and it's going right up there in S tier as well. It takes the issues I had with the Mark 50, but fixes it. It reintroduces the whole armored concept rather than like the skin tight muscular concept that the Mark 50 had. And also it resembles the more traditional classic Iron Man look from the comics with the predominant gold arms and the golden like thighs and legs and the red everywhere else. It's just a really cool looking suit. And of course it was the one that he used in Endgame. You can't go wrong with that. I think everyone in the Avengers looked their best in Endgame, so S tier from the Mark 85. So just to recap here, these are my bottom five suits and these are my top five. And looking at them all side by side, they really all do resemble each other in a sense where it's a typical Iron Man look, but just in different flavors. <laughs> but yeah, this was my ranking of all the Iron Man suits in the MCU. If you agree, if you disagree, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And again, I left a link in the description for you to make your own version of this tier list. So be sure to check it out and make your own version. Share with me either on Twitter or any of the social medias that I have listed there in the description or even just put it in the comments just if you want to just take the time to write out your top 10. Just let me know in the comments what your armors would be. I'm really interested to see your thoughts and I love interacting with you guys on this channel. It's honestly just part of the fun. And again, stay tuned for a video I'm working on right now of the Mark 8 versus Mark 9 debate and my take on what suit I think it was at the end of Iron Man 3. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching.